We'd like to welcome those stations joining us at this point. The Space Shuttle Columbia is now approaching Edwards Air Force Base in California and will be landing shortly. And we are all set up to bring it to you live. Here's Frank Reynolds. Frank? Thank you, David. And you saw just a moment ago there the... ...on the Mojave Desert just nine minutes from now. President Reagan is here to see it all for himself. The first time a president has greeted returning astronauts since Richard Nixon met the Apollo 11 crew on a carrier off Hawaii 13 years ago. Also here, what looks to be the largest crowd... And doesn't that baby look nice? She's only about uh, nine or ten minutes, really, away from a touchdown. That's a long-range camera, and the uh, space shuttle is still a hundred miles or so away from the actual touchdown point. Touchdown in eight minutes and 34 seconds. She's just crossed the coastline, actually just south of Santa Barbara, and will continue straight on, almost on a direct line to Edwards Air Force Base, where there is a large crowd waited to, uh, waiting to greet the astronauts, including, of course, President Reagan, who will be out there today, arrived a short while ago. These are really the first uh, shots we've had now of the Space Shuttle Columbia since uh, she roared off the pad just about exactly one week ago and an hour uh, from the, today, last Sunday at uh, Cape Kennedy and the now familiar spectacular launch. And the Columbia has now successfully gone around the Earth, completed its mission flawlessly. And uh, we have lost the picture for just a moment, but we've already had uh, reacquisition of signal. The space uh, craft is in communication with the ground and they've been given the clear clearance for landing here at Edwards Air Force Base on runway 22. So now we want to bring in our correspondents who are there at uh, the uh, Edwards Air Force Base. First of all, we'll get a quick glimpse of the president under an umbrella there, a sunshade. He and Mrs. Reagan are there on the uh, special platform that's been erected for them to uh, watch the return of the Columbia. And here's some of the crowd. We're told there are more than 300,000 people scattered all around this huge, sprawling complex to try to get a glimpse of Columbia as she comes down. Let's bring in now Lynn Sher and Gene Cernan at Edwards Air Force Base. Lynn? Frank, good morning. Uh, as you say, it is a perfect day. This is also probably the first return of Columbia with music. You can probably hear a little band music in the background. Uh, a lot of people here waving a lot of flags. It's going to be a little bit different from what we've seen before. And Gene Cernan, it's a lot different from White Sands. Frank, it's a great day for a birthday party. Everyone here is in a jubilant spirit. As Lynn said, the flags are flying, the president's here, and we're all waiting for the return of Columbia to come home. And that will happen before long. You're not very far away from hearing the old sonic boom, are you? as she goes over. We ought, to, we ought to. We expect to hear that boom. Uh, I think we'll hear it probably in the next two or three minutes because the uh, Columbia has crossed the coastline and uh, she'll be landing here in about uh, six more minutes. Everybody here, by the way, Frank, uh, is going to be informed of all these things. They have imported Hugh Harris, who is the voice of launch control. He is out here telling all the visitors, the very important visitors, exactly what to expect. This is also something new for this return of Columbia. There's a huge banner. I don't know if you've seen it yet, over on one of the hangars, saying, Welcome home, Columbia. And certainly everybody here feels that way. Well, it certainly is a, a grand occasion for the... Uh for NASA to have the president there, to have the touchdown come on the 4th of July. Here's our graphic showing that we have five minutes. Where is it now, Leo? Let's listen. Right about now, he's just south of Bakersfield. And mission control. The Dryden Long Range Camera has acquired Columbia. At 69,000 feet, Mach 1.6, 39 miles. How fast is 1.6, Leo? Well, that's 1.6 times the speed of sound. The first time, it's some 15,000 feet long and about uh, 300 feet wide, but it has plenty of desert on either side and at either end of it. So the uh, runway landing here will not quite be uh, the same as landing at Kennedy uh, Space Center in Florida, which, of course, is what eventually... Columbia, Houston, cameras. This has certainly been the smoothest of all the shuttle flights, really flawless considering its complexity, perhaps in many senses the most successful, the most least flawed flight of 20 years of manned flights. The chase plane should be uh, closing in for their rendezvous and hopefully we'll get some close television shots. 1.1 now at 51,000 feet, range 27 miles. 
They're returning from seven days in space. <laughs> Gene, the angle of descent now, they're really coming down fast, aren't they? The, of course, the, the vehicle is a glider. The spacecraft is a glider. It doesn't have very large wings. As a result, it, it has to maintain a lot of speed to manage its energy. And you will see a very steep descent, uh, as we have looked at in the past. We're still seeing uh, it should be about overhead. It's 10 miles away, and it'll just be a matter of uh, 10 or 15 seconds before we may very well pick up that sonic boom. And you haven't yet uh, been able to see it. No, we haven't. There, oh. there we go. How's that oh. for timing, Frank? <laughs> just it just went seconds. over the top, obviously. I think that's about as loud as we've ever had yeah, it here. I'm getting good after a little practice. <laughs> well, now we'll we can see, the, the, heading, see the president and everybody now. else looking up there. I think he's got it in view. Frank, I, I, think we, I think we do have some contrails of it uh, just to the southwest of us over here. There it is. Now you can see the contrail of the uh, shuttle itself. We have a very good visual. Uh, it's oh, yes. just, a, just a tremendous day now, and I think that's a chase plane camera. One chase plane camera up there with a the friend this time. Feet. Used to be two, but the one is providing excellent coverage, as you can see. Gene, is it in the big left turn now, swinging around? It, it's in a big sweeping left-hand turn, and what it's doing is uh, is uh, losing some of its altitude, maintaining a proper speed, so it has, again, enough energy to make the runway. This is a very critical phase of the maneuver. It, it will be uh, reaching out about 10 to 15 miles away as before it turns back in. Frank, this uh, concrete runway, as you probably know, is a, a bit further off than runway 23, where it's landed the previous two times here at Edwards. So we are not going to get quite as wonderful a visual sighting as we had before. The picture we're seeing here is of the president. I noticed, by the way, that as soon as that sonic boom hit and the uh, spacecraft came into sight, everybody got up off the seats. They were sitting down before. Oh, you can see the contrails now, just behind the, uh, 18, feet now. the spacecraft. Frank, the president 18. is on a platform with... Uh, several uh, astronauts who have already flown in the shuttle. Let's see if we can't pick up more communications now between the spacecraft and the ground. He's being well briefed out there by previous well, shuttle pilots. Turning into a heading uh, lined up with the run. He's locked on what we call the auto land approach. So auto land is flying this airplane. It's all out of bounds. And the chase planes uh, on both sides of the shuttle now. 264. Final and looking very good. Uh, 2,500 feet. Look at the little chase plane alongside. <laughs> it's always a beautiful sight. Should be lined up with the runway, turning uh, in on what we might, what we call final at this point in time. But she's still about uh, six, seven miles away. 9,600 feet. 282 knots. Ah, it's just auto land guidance now. This is what uh, Commander well, Mattingly has referred to as that magic so, uh, machine called the shuttle. Look at the escort. <laughs> now, Frank, you can see how steeply she comes. And Mattingly will take over at uh, 2,500 feet for the landing. Okay, he's in automatic guidance. He'll be taking over manually here to uh, land the aircraft uh, with stick and rudders like normal airplanes are landed. 280 well, knots at uh, 4,200 feet. 3,000. 2,200 feet. He should have it manually. He's still at uh, well over 200 knots when he touches down. The fans are cheering. Americans are cheering out here. This is really a great birthday party. They're getting a play-by-play -play on the loudspeakers, too. And is the president going to get a view? There's the landing oh, gear. She came great. out. Yeah. There it is. You're down. She'll I'm just down. gently come down. Keep it coming, Ken. Keep it coming. He's a little Gears fast. Down Stand by for touchdown. There it is. Touchdown. There's the dust. The nose will come down gently, and this time I expect it'll stay down. Not like the last time when it suddenly reared up again. Yeah. Outstanding job. Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> he heard you, Gene. He heard you. That's Brewster Shaw, the Capcom, echoing that. Outstanding. Well, let's see how much runway he uses now. Shuttle control here, the unofficial landing time, seven days, one hour, nine minutes, 40 seconds. We were to repeat about to... the unofficial landing time, seven days, one hour, nine minutes, 40 seconds. Well, we're about 14 <laughs> seconds early, but we lifted off on time, Frank. Lift, lifted off 135 milliseconds early, Frank. Came down 13 seconds early. Has he still got some runway left? 
He's got a ways to go. There you see the president yes. with that. You see Bob Crippen, uh, who was on STS-1, just punched the air when that came down. He was real happy. He's got his own craft going up, uh, STS-7. He'll be commanding. This is a pretty good way to impress the commander-in-chief. Ah, he's come to a stop. And it really ended the program in a, with a, one of the most perfect flights I've ever seen. It will, be, it will be some time before the astronauts come out. So at this moment, before we return here to assess the mission, let's pause for these messages. Landed here, uh, both Columbia and then Challenger, for the next couple landings, and I think they'll get a shot at it. This, of course, makes it operational, flight. Frank. This is uh, the end of the test flights for Columbia. That's right. Now goes into the, the, the end of the test flights, and now off into the operational. Here's a replay now, videotape of the Columbia as she comes in for her fourth return from space.